Hey everybody, it's your boy Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one podcast coming to you live in America. And today we have a very, very special guest, the CEO of this incredible startup. I am rocking this brand right now. And I, I, I'm going to just tell you, I've been rocking these glasses for weeks. I don't want to spill any more tea. We're going to just dive right into it. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody, it's Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one podcast coming to you live in America. And today I have the CEO, director, and co-founder of an incredible company, Lucid Corp. Mr. Harrison's background is in tech and marketing and brand development. He drives the Lucid brand story. Also, he's a user and user experience as well. He's also in charge of product development. This man is doing it all for this company with an incredible team behind him. He hails all the way from Columbia University and he's a graduate of the university. He works at the Lucid full time, 40 plus hours a week. He is grinding. And that's what most of us really have to understand that even as a as, as successful and as hardworking and as driven as this man is, he puts in the work. And today we are in for a special treat. As we dive into these incredible glasses, I want to tell you, I call them smart glasses um, because they're smarter than me and they're coming for iPhone. So I'm going to put that little plug in here. Um, Bill Gates, Microsoft, all y'all can hate me if you want. But introducing the incredible, amazing Mr. Harrison. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for joining the Gentleman Style Podcast show. We appreciate you being on and taking the time out of your busy schedule sure, and sure. giving back in this way. So, sir, these glasses are phenomenal. Yeah. But on top of that, what I feel like there's a story. What inspired you to develop these glasses? What's the story behind them? So it, it actually goes back pretty far, but about three, four years ago, uh, I was working for a tech incubator, uh, which had the stated purpose of finding university technologies and turning them into startups, basically. And we came across these really interesting smart glass uh, patents out of the UCF optics lab. And, you know, we, we were looking at sort of the smart glass space and there wasn't really any successful products yet uh, back in 2017. There's still, uh, it could still be said today, there hasn't really been anything that has gone fully mainstream. That's something that we're working on, of course. Right. Um, but yeah, we saw that there was a lot of white space. Nobody had really been able to make smart glasses take off. Uh, you know, there was the Google Glass. There were some other uh, kind of uh, off-the-shelf Chinese products. Um, but there was nothing with the sort of brand power and the, the, the full prescription capabilities and that all-day wearability factor that makes it not just another uh, geeky tech product, but actually an upgrade to eyeglasses. Yeah. So uh, we've always come at it from a perspective of like, we, need, we are an eyewear company. Uh, we make eyewear that is enhanced with technology. We do not just make a regular consumer electronic or another pair of headphones in the way that like some of our competitors might look at it. Um, and uh, we start with great glasses and then we add in the tech features and, and, and we really made sure that this new product is light enough to wear all day um, because we saw that as the key barrier uh, to mainstream adoption of smart eyewear. And with this new light, as uh, Marcus has over there, um, that frame only weighs 1.4 ounces, and the Wayfarer model only weighs 1.2 ounces, which is a fraction of an ounce uh, more than a standard regular old pair of glasses. So it really does feel and look uh, like a regular pair of glasses. So we've made it to the point where uh, the technology has finally gotten to a point where you have two pairs of glasses that look the same, that cost the same, uh, but one has Bluetooth features and one doesn't. So why would you ever pick the one that does it at this point? <laughs> um, so we've tried to remove all of those barriers of entry with the smart eyewear. You know, it's too expensive, it's too heavy, it's too geeky. Um, they just look so unfashionable. You know, we've answered all of these problems one by one, and now we finally have an attractive smart glass product that's affordable that you can wear as your regular eyeglasses. Uh, because we see that that is the target market for this product is people that already wear glasses or sunglasses every day. Um, and, you know, how do we deliver more value, more utility to that product uh, without increasing the price and without making it look ugly? 
And uh, after three previous lines of Bluetooth eyewear, we finally have this product, uh, which is built largely fund completely community funded, actually, uh, through the two crowd funds that we've done. And uh, yeah, it's it, and through that that user community, uh, their feedback has helped develop this product, uh, working very closely with the company itself. So this is actually you're wearing a fully crowdsourced pair of glasses. It was built by the crowd. It was funded by the crowd. It was chosen by the crowd. We actually run surveys to determine our new styles uh, among our community. So those were user chosen styles. Um, so everything comes from our community. And it just makes for such a stronger product because it's not just a product that was, you know, thunk up by a couple engineers in a room. This was a product that was built by thousands of eyewear lovers around the world. I love that. I absolutely yeah. love that. And that's what I mean. These glasses are lightweight. Like you said, they're lightweight. They're incredible. And mm -hmm. also, you all, when I order these glasses, I can actually see you. These aren't mm -hmm. the Walmart brand that you go pick up and you hope that you can see. These came, when they were delivered, they came prescription. And mm -hmm. and the packaging, the packaging was phenomenal. <laughs> it was well-labeled. Yeah. It was identifiable. And it kept my glasses safe. But mm -hmm. I want to talk about some of the features. You mentioned Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. These glasses are Bluetooth enabled, and and when you, <laughs> how do they work? How do you enable? How do you activate the Bluetooth? And I'll be your model here for the audience. Yeah, I'm I'm actually waiting on my prescription pair. It got held up uh, by uh, the mail this week because of the Texas thing, because of the winter storms. All the mail got slowed <sighs> down, and uh, yeah, it's just a disaster. So I'd love to be able to just show you a pair I'm wearing, but I got one over here with uh, some blue light lenses in it, there we uh, go. just like you're wearing. Yep. And um, basically, all there is is, is is a Bluetooth chip in each arm. Uh, they're completely independent. There's no wire running through the front, which allows us to have that those more stylish fronts. Um, and basically, you got two little touch buttons on the bottom here, these little gold buttons. I don't know if you can see. But this is where you turn on the glasses, um, and you have all these useful touch controls, like you can touch the left side once to go down a volume notch, and you can touch the right to go up a volume notch. Uh, you can double tap to pause your music. Uh, you can hold the button, either button for two seconds to call up Siri. Uh, so you can use your voice assistant from the glasses, which is really handy. What? You can, yeah, yeah. Because you can do things like uh, you can send Cash App through the glasses. Um, what? You can check your stock price. Yeah, it's really convenient. Oh, my gosh. So basically oh. anything you can do with Siri, you can do on the glasses, which is really great for if you're on the go, you're a pedestrian, cyclist, or any of these people that you really shouldn't be taking your phone out because uh, you're on the road or whatever, you know, you just have that ability to get that information you need without breaking your focus. Um, and then you have two little speaker vents on the bottom here, and this is basically projects the sound down onto your ear. And uh, that's it, e-glasses. This is the first like real pair of e-glasses because it is it is glasses, but with tech features. When uh, he and when he's talking about the sound, y'all, it's, it's, I feel like it's in my head. Like the sound quality, <laughs> Is but it's not as intrusive, right? So when you're walking yep. around with like earplugs in your ear, they may mm -hmm. fall out, they may need to be readjusted. The sound quality as if it's almost like the person is standing next to me um mm -hmm. in the room. And yep. I've re I've been receiving phone calls. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. I and and this technology, I when I saw it, I had to jump on board and I prayed, mm -hmm. prayed, prayed that Mr. Lucy would come on the show, and he did. Okay. But <laughs> and tell us how much do they cost? They are actually pretty affordable, y'all. Yep. And we're gonna get right back into that. We're gonna jump into the price of the glasses yep. after this quick, quick commercial break. See you guys. Soon. I'm Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. Everybody, this is your boy Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one podcast. We have the incredible CEO, founder, Mr. Lucid, and he, <laughs> Mr. Harrison, excuse me. I <laughs> His have Mr. Company, Lucid also. <laughs> okay. Mr. Lucid. 
we have Mr. Harrison here talking about his great um smart I call them smart glasses because mm -hmm. they really make the experience hand free but they're not bulky they're not ugly they're still fashionable they're still incredible and they're not yeah. heavy duty um they yeah. so we were just talking about the fashion statement and how Mr. Harrison and his company broke into the industry now we are asking a question how much do they cost let's talk about the money so the glasses were 149 uh with polarized sunglass lenses um and then we offer actually a basic prescription upgrade for only $35. So we are pretty much beating everybody on the prescription lens prices. Uh, if you go into a lens crafters or a target optical, uh, their lenses are gonna start around 75 or 100. Um, so we make it very affordable to switch over to our product and uh, add a prescription or any, actually we offer over 25 different custom lenses. Like we have transitions, bifocals, uh, reading lenses, um, if you, uh, if you're an old person that wants our glasses, I guess. Uh, but we have like basically a full, we have a full lens lab, so we can cut all these prescriptions to order. And what's great is uh, most of our custom lens orders are actually shipped in under 24 hours because our lab is super fast. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's really like a, a 21st century eyeglass store. You know, it's like, it's a full revolution over the kind of experiences you would get going into an optical store. Um, in that, you know, we have this tech enabled product and we have this, a uh, full lens lab that's much more affordable than a brick and mortar uh, optical store. Um, so we really do have like almost all the angles covered, I would say, in in, in a regular eyewear business, but with this with these exciting tech features on top of it, at, at a basically a price match with the regular glasses. Um, that's yeah. how. Yeah. That's that's amazing. See, yeah. so it's not breaking the bank, y'all. And he, <laughs> remember, he said seventy five dollars to start. That's just the lens. Oh no! So no, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's just the lens. So if you're going into Sterling Optical or your your local mm -hmm. um, opt optic, I was gonna say dietitian, optician. your local <laughs> optician, right? You still gotta pay for the frames. You still gotta pay for the lenses. You still gotta pay for it. You know he's gonna try and sell you on the contacts. And then mm -hmm. if you want the transitional lenses, th mm -hmm. that that price that he just gave was all inclusive. And I and yeah. the website was completely user friendly. I mm -hmm. was able to go to my my op optician and get a copy of my prescription and upload it to the website and they did all the work and it came beautifully packaged so affordable stylish fashionable and it's tech now i'm a i'm a techno geek i'm gonna just call myself that i'm a techno geek so i love technology anything that i could do um i could talk to siri hands-free i absolutely mm -hmm. love that and mr harrison and his company is leading the charge um i gotta ask a question are you still take this is a community this company was started by community are you still seeking investors yeah actually so we have a round on start engine a regulation crowdfund that's open right now um startengine.com slash noi i n n o i I'll put it in the chat below. And basically, uh, we have a lot of interest so far. We've raised 750K um, from about 3,000 uh, eyewear and early tech adopters, uh, which is really great. And um, you know, let me put the full length. Uh, so Rob. that round, we're expecting it to close in the next month. And uh, we're going to hit the cap uh, of what you can legally raise in a regulation crowdfund, which up until like a few weeks ago was 1.07 million. But what's really exciting actually is that the government has raised the cap on crowd funds and now you could raise up to $5 million per year in a crowd fund, uh, which was not possible before. Uh, it wasn't even possible in our current crowd fund because when we started, uh, the cap was still 1.07. But now it's like we can community fund this business until the end of time if we want to, uh, because we can raise 5 million a year, which is plenty to grow uh, even, even, a, even a big startup. Um, that that's growing fast. So it's, 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 it's great. And you know, we love the whole crowdfund aspect. Uh, it's just so much more powerful than just having one or two traditional investors uh, because every single one of our True. investors is also a customer is also a brand advocate is an affiliate. And it's basically, and since we're an e-commerce business, it, it all ties together really closely. Um, and we just get so much extra momentum from this community that we have. And you know, as soon as we drop a new style, we know that hundreds of people are going to buy it, um, and we know that uh, you know people are going to share it all over the web as our affiliates. And so it's it makes a much more powerful company, in my opinion. 
Um, and, and, you know, we love Start Engine, and I, I could see us continuing to raise on this platform uh, for basically the rest of the time that we're operating. Um, just because now with this 5 million cap, it's like you could, you could really grow a serious business through the crowd now. And, uh, the, it, and the infrastructure didn't exist a few years ago. Um, sure. Like even around uh, three, four years ago, uh, in, the crowd funds were still pretty much restricted to Kickstarters and GoFundMes where you can't really sell equity. Um, sure. And it wasn't until I think, I think it was in 2015, the crowd fund uh, regulation started again. And basically for the first time in 20 years, you could go get uh, little small investors to join a project because that, that had been shut off around 2000. Um, and, and yeah, it's just, it's just great. Cause you get that, that huge benefit of having this community at your back as opposed to just, you know, a uh, casual investor, which is impossible to get if you're outside of California anyway. Uh, you, can't really, <laughs> you can't really just walk in. This, I mean, I'm in Miami. So there's like now only in the last three months, uh, we've seen a bunch of investors come to the city because they want to get out of California. They want to get out of Texas, you know, all these other places that are having a lot of issues uh, in terms of economically and other and then because of the weather and other things. Um, and the fire so, and the ganja. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's 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 very difficult. California business environment now, like Elon Musk tried to is moving to Texas. I mean, he's leaving. Uh, yeah, I mean, they still have their huge operation there, but uh, it's, it's not as favorable to business as Florida is. Um, so just, you know, take what you will. Obviously, deregulation is, is a positive in some areas and negative in others. But, um, you know, Florida kind of stands back and lets the businesses do what they need to do, uh, which is which is why I think a lot of people are coming here. Um, and the cost of living is relatively low compared to the quality of life also, which is great. Absolutely. Um, so I, I, I don't want to overshadow this. I don't want you all to yeah. miss this. What, what Mr. Harrison is talking about, y'all, is um, crowdfunding is the ability for people to get in and invest in these companies before he's still a private company right mm -hmm. typically what we're used to and what we're here what we're used to hearing about is investing in a company after it's gone on a stock exchange this is an opportunity to get in on the amazon to get in on tesla to get yeah. in on a startup not, not i don't even want to call you a startup but get oh, in stage yeah, early stage company. Yeah, early stage to get in and invest in the early stages of this company, um, in the beginning, in the beginning as as the company grows. So that's what we're talking about here. This is not a stock exchange traded company. You're not going to get an opportunity to to see this company um, on the stock exchange. So don't think you're going to say, "Well, I'm going to go on Robinhood and I'll just invest that way." No, this is an ability to get in on the ground up. So if you were mad, if you were kicking yourself. And mad at yourself, say, man, if I had just got um, Bitcoin when it was was you know starting up, or when I just got Amazon or eBay or Google when it was just starting up, when the guy was you know building it in his garage, this is your opportunity. That's what these interviews are about. That's why Mr. Harrison is taking time out his busy day to allow us the opportunity to get in on this opportunity because it is an opportunity. So there's an investing side and there's a sales side to his business that you all, that we all have to consider. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's throwing out these numbers and that's why he's speaking. Yeah. On it. You're, you're very gracious to compare us to Bitcoin, by the way. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it is, it, it is very exciting. And it's more interesting than a Kickstarter or GoFundMe where you just get the product because you actually get equity in the company. You are an owner of the company when you join this crowdfund. Um, so, you know, it, there's definitely more of a benefit long term as opposed to joining a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or something like that, Indiegogo, what have you. Um, but yeah, we're, and you also can see on our crowdfund page, we do have a lot of great fundamentals. We have a solid full time team of about seven guys right now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it, it's, it's a very exciting time to be an entrepreneur and to be in this sort of startup world uh, because there are a lot more resources out there than even two or three years ago. I've been in the space for five years now, and uh, the the amount of capital that's being raised in small cap companies is growing a lot, which I did not expect during the pandemic. I figured. Really? Yeah, I thought investment across the board was going to be going down, but it turns out that uh, especially in micro cap and startups, uh, it's going way, way up. And the number of retail investors is, is, is increasing by a huge amount. Um, why that is, I, I'm not really sure. It could be people have more time on their hands. Um, <laughs> it's, it could be that. It could be, uh, you know, some, some people are 
you know, a small number of people are doing well during the pandemic for one reason or another. They're seeing basically if you're positioned already in an online business, your chances are you're doing pretty well now, uh, as opposed to, you know, if you were positioned in a brick and mortar businesses uh, or in a restaurant business, for example, you could be hurting really badly right now. But those of us that were fortunately already uh, set up as online businesses prior to the pandemic, we're in a better position to capitalize on the changing market trends. That's true. That's true. We have a question from the audience. So I wanted to get um, the CEO, the man, the myth, the legend himself. So Ms. Shanique Henry asks, are the glasses unisex? Do you have male and female? So we currently have uh, six styles total in two different shapes. And the round one is a little bit more unisex, I would say. Um, this is kind of this is the style Marcus is wearing right now. Uh, it's a little bit more of just a classic all around round style. And then we have this Wayfair style. Um, which is a little bit more masculine. And we're yeah. planning on launching three more styles this summer and uh, another three uh, around Black Friday. So by the end of the year, um, we hope to have 12 styles available to kind of fit a, a wider range of users. But in our view, uh, in the coming years, eventually all eyewear will be smart eyewear. Um, and we really do believe that that is gonna happen um, because as the technology improves further and further, uh, there's going to really be no reason to buy a regular old pair of glasses when you can get a smart glass for the same price. So um, it, it, with that goal in mind, um, we're looking to eventually have a full line of, let's say, 40 or 50 different styles and sizes to accommodate, uh, you know, com basically everybody. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I wear it's not like a Fitbit. You know, it's, it's a highly specialized product. You wear it on your face. It's an extension of your personality. Um, that's why when you go into the eyewear store, they have 500 different frames. So. Uh, we only have six now, but that's just the start. And we're hoping to have a lot more out uh, available very soon. That's incredible. We're going to take another question from the audience. Um, Ms. Shanika Tremaine asked the questions, how do I join? <laughs> so if you want to join the crowdfund, um, the link is startengine.com slash N-O-I, I-N-N-O-E-Y-E. -E. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you can join the crowdfund there. Uh, I know it says it's closing in two days, but we're actually extending it uh, for another month. So uh, no rush on that. But one other thing I will mention is if you invest $500, you get a free pair of the glasses uh, as a bonus. And we include your prescription if you have one. Please, please, I don't want anybody running around blind. Please put your <laughs> prescription up there. I was yeah. I was almost about to do it. I was about to, to, to get them without a prescription, but I said, no, I want to wear these all the yeah. time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, that makes perfect sense. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's great. And... Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, you can actually connect them to like any device. So you can connect them direct to an Apple watch when you're out working out and you can play your tunes off your watch. You get a call, you can take it on the glasses. You don't even need to carry your phone. Uh, you can connect it directly to a laptop for Zoom calls. This is this is the big one because uh, no one really talks about like Zoom accessories or anything too much. Um, but we found that the, the glasses connected to a laptop, the sound quality is great on a Zoom. Um, and you can get them with the blue light lenses. So you're not wearing your sunglasses, uh, while you're taking a work call <laughs> and, uh, it'll protect your eyes and, uh, and crystal clear audio on the zoom call as well. Um, which is great. Uh, especially if you're in an, if you're in, are in a shared work setting in an office or something like that, uh, when you have the headphones in, you tend to kind of shout a little bit, uh, when you're on a call, I'm doing it right now. Um, but when you have the glasses on, you can hear, you have that feedback from your actual, um, from your actual voice so you know not to talk too loud so it's uh it's really great for just taking those zoom calls especially people like me i'm on calls all the time I'm sure you're on calls all the time um you could actually ditch those headphones and just hook up the glasses straight to your computer i mean i don't know if you uh if you need that super high fidelity um while you're recording but uh and it's just it's just a really it's really handy on the zooms it's just great um and uh there's <laughs> There's a whole other uh, can of worms I don't really want to open, but we're actually working on a social app too uh, for voice. What? Yeah, uh, it's called Verb, B-Y-R-B. And uh, if you guys check out our crowdfund page, there's some more info about Verb there. Um, but it's basically, uh, it's, it, I wouldn't say it's like Clubhouse. You know, Clubhouse, this is, we started working on this way before Clubhouse got popular. But the idea was um, the human voice is kind of missing from the modern experience online. Um, there's, and YouTube is really the only place that has, YouTube and podcasts are really the only place that have a significant amount of voice content. 
so we just we were thinking like, what's what's a cool way we can optimize the glass? We can add on to the glasses to add on additional functionality, add on social functionality. Right. Um, so basically, we're working on this app. It's like part walkie-talkie, where you can kind of walkie-talkie with your friends on the glasses, and part just like a Facebook, but voice content focus. Voice Twitter, I would say, is a more accurate description of it. I like that. So instead of just text tweets, you actually have people saying their thoughts, and there's different kinds of chats where you can create like a uh, basically a conversation where your friends can jump jump into the conversation. Um, and it's just really cool. So we're expecting to have that beta out in July. Uh, and it's just going to be another awesome feature of the glasses uh, to be able to record your, you know, your podcasts or, or your music or whatever kind of audio content you like to make and uh, share it with all these people. And uh, yeah, it's just really cool. Um, it's super cool. Yeah, I've been freaking you know, everybody out. <laughs> Because everybody's yeah. looking yeah. at me and they're like, where's your phone? And I'm having a full on conversation <laughs> with yeah. just my glasses. And then it, the transitions between music and, and like I said, y'all, the transition be is is crystal clear. It's not staticky. It's not itchy. It's not hard to hear you, um, mm -hmm. even though you may look, even I look weird. Right, because I'm talking and I don't have anything in my ear. What people are now used to is they're used to seeing the, the iPods in your ear. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a full conversation, and I'm just wearing these. Yeah. And uh, until they see the LED go off, they don't know it's a it's an e glass usually, which is great. This yeah. is the future, y'all. You all are incredible, and this is amazing. You mentioned working out, right? You mentioned working mm -hmm. out with the glasses. Um, are they waterproof or water resistant? They are. They're IP fifty six splash proof, which means that they're fine in rain or sweat. Just don't drop them in the pool, and they'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you can get a little sweat on there. You get a little raindrops here and there, but yeah, y'all don't don't go dipping with them. Don't don't. Yeah. I mean, look, if you're daring, you can take them on the kayak, but uh, <laughs> I can't promise I they'll they'll make it out alive. <laughs> I, uh, I I wouldn't. I would not. Yeah. What? What sets you apart from your competition? So you mentioned Sterling Optical and America's um, best glass eyewear. What sets mm -hmm. you apart from your competition? Well, in our view, the real competition would be the Bose frames, uh, which is sort of the more pop, the most popular out of the very few like real products in the space. Um, uh, you know, obviously, because Bose is a huge billion dollar company, and they they have much deeper distribution and uh, than we do as as a young start as a young company, but um, there, there are main competition, but when you look at the Bose frames and you look at our glasses, it's immediately clear which one you want to wear, uh, cause True. ours just looks so much better and they cost a hundred dollars less than the Bose. And don't even get me started on the prescription, but if you want to get a prescription Bose frame, it's going to cost you $375. Ooh. We do not cost $375. It costs not 180, even. we're 185 with a prescription. So uh, the cost is much lower. Um, the style factor is much higher. And all of our designs are patented and completely made in-house by us. Uh, so no one can just rip them off. Um, and, and actually, the touch controls on our glass are also better than the Bose glass. But, but ultimately, what it really comes down to is the style factor. Because with eyewear, that's number one. Um, and if you have a better looking pair of glasses, uh, no matter what the other pair of glasses does, uh, people are going to go for the better looking pair. Um, just because, like I said, you know, it's it's on your face. You know, it's hard to get more personal than that. Uh, it, it is really like this key part of your personality, your your eyewear choice. You know, um, so having that, and, and we see <laughs> in the reviews, in some of our user reviews, we've had people that have had both our product and the Bose product, and that's usually what they what they mention is that the style and the light is just so much better. So that's what I wear because it looks better. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. What is your plan for the for the company? What is your projection for your company? Well, uh, it's tough to say exactly, but you know, I think we're making a really solid go of it uh, as in a community funded e-commerce business. And I think um, we're definitely going to continue along that trajectory, but we are also going to get into mainstream distribution. Uh, right now, we're working on getting the frames into Target Optical. And Dick Sporting Goods are our two main targets because we think those two environments are just really well suited to the product. Yeah. Um, I would like to keep it community funded uh, for as long as possible. And I, I think ultimately, uh, if the company is successful, we will go public at some point. Absolutely. So, hey, Mr. Mr. Harrison, I want to thank you, sir. This is incredible. Um, oh, as, we, as we close, what what 
is your favorite way to give back to the community? We keep bringing it up during this this conversation. What's your favorite way to give back? Uh, so we actually donate an optical frame for every light that we sell. And um, so far, we've donated like uh, a little under a thousand frames, I think. Uh, we only started this program uh, a few months ago. But after every, oh, we had one more, we had one moment that was really great. After everything went down um, this summer, you know, with the protests and uh, the energy was just really tough out there. And, you know, we wanted to really do something good for the local kids. So we donated 100 units of our Bluetooth glasses to North Miami High School. And um, they were just so thrilled to, to just get that from a local business and just see that we cared. And it, it was just, it was really like a high point for me for the business over the last couple of years. Um, just because they were just so happy and they're like, oh, we're going to give these to the kids that are perform, that are do, you know, perform well in tests or, you know, in after school programs and stuff. And just having that local impact, like as a community funded business, we're all about that, you know, and um, it was like, just like really seeing that we were doing something positive uh, and it just felt great, you know. I love that. I love that. Yeah. See y'all. So when you invest in a company, you want you you have to dive deep, and you're, you're not going to get any deeper than that. A community based company that believes in its product and believes in the community that supports it. Mr. Harrison, is there any final words you want to leave with my audience? Any way that they can reach out? How can my audience connect and get on board with what you're doing? Um, well, you can always uh, reach out to us through the website or uh, at Go Lucid is our Instagram uh and you know we'd love to hear from you any suggestions or thoughts or anything um any frame style ideas or anything that you have uh like i said you know it all comes from our community so uh we'd just be grateful to hear from you absolutely yeah. thank you mr harrison for giving back in this way i appreciate yeah, you absolutely. taking the time out of your schedule uh, it's my pleasure and thank you all for tuning into the Gentleman Style Podcast show. Um, like always, I hope this message has served you. It has definitely served me. And I'm going to continue to rock these glasses. And if they break, I'm going to get a new pair. <laughs> but these are the glasses of the future. So hop on board. Um, if you're ever considering, um, you all have asked for alternative investments. Mr. Lucid, Mr. Harrison, Mr. Lucid. Mr. Harrison <laughs> is at the forefront and changing That's the so absolute awesome. eyewear game. Like yeah. I always say, I'm going to leave you guys with this. Take care of your families, take care of your homes, and take care of business. This is Marcus Norman, the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and Mr. Harrison signing off. Love you take guys. Care. Bye. Bye, everybody.